And the results are in. The Fox Business Network has unveiled the GOP candidate lineup for the next debate. And Governor Chris Christie did not make the cut. Florida, Florida Senator Marco Rubio joins us now with reaction. Good morning to you, Good Senator. Morning. Great to have Good you here on the couch. Good to have you. So, obviously, Governor Mike Huckabee, Governor Chris Christie now in that undercard debate. What's your reaction to that? Well, you feel, I feel bad for them. I mean, they're, none of them are working hard and they're, they're good people. And I thought they both performed well in the last debate. So it's unfortunate. Anytime you set up a criteria, someone might fall out of it. I feel even worse for the people that didn't even make the second debate, you know, uh, Lindsey Graham and others who are also working hard. I mean, these, these guys are out there, they're flying around the country, they're, do, they're sure. working as hard as anybody else is, and it's unfortunate, right. you know, but, um, uh, you know, it'll all work out, I imagine. Sure, there's going to be a threshold for something. I, th I think Chris right. Christie actually this could be good for him. On the undercard, remember how right. Carly Fiorina, when she was on the earlier debate, she actually excelled, wound up leapfrogging into the uh, main event and has done very well. I saw well. you looking left and right for Brian Kilmeade, by the way. He's yeah, actually he? joining us from uh, <laughs> Washington, D.C. He was there for his book signing last night and he's here now, wants to say hello. Hey, uh, uh, Senator, congratulations on the surge on the polls. Because you surged, as we look at the, as we look at the map, the, the floor plan, you're going to be right next to Donald Trump. Now, we know he high-fived awkwardly with Jeb Bush. We know he's winked and touched the shoulder of people next to him. How is that going to affect your approach, being that you're next to a guy who you were sparring with for the last 24 hours and probably right up to the debate? Well, it, Physically. Well, I, mean, I was last time, too, so that's not going to be a big deal one way or the other. I'm there to talk about the future of America and the issues that voters care about it's not a personality conflict with anybody else so it ain't gonna but it has anymore. been for the last few days senator because he, he has taken you on about uh credit card issues which you're discussing today and you have taken him on about his multiple bankruptcies so that's personal. Yeah, i just find it ironic that uh, donald trump has had four bankruptcies and uh in his businesses and who is he to attack anybody on finances i mean i just find that ironic but you know we'll, we'll move on i'm for proud of I've, my background i'm proud of where i come from I'm proud of what we've been able to achieve. Today, today my family and I are in, you know, we, we have one debt in the world, which is the mortgage on our home. But I didn't, you know, I grew up having to earn everything. I had the student loans, for example, because my parents couldn't you pay for my school. Off, yeah, and I'm, you know, let me tell you, that's why I'm so passionate about these issues. I, a lot of what Americans are facing on a daily basis, I faced 10 or 15 years ago, in some cases, five or eight years ago. And that's why I'm so passionate to fight on behalf of the people in this country that are struggling, because I know what it feels like. I grew up paycheck to paycheck. Do you believe when Donald Trump criticizes your handling of your finances, your debt, that he actually in turn is criticizing most Americans? It's an interesting point. I mean, if you look across the country, there, for example, when I bought a house in 2005, mm -hmm. like anybody who bought a house in 2005 in Miami, a year and a half later, it lost a lot of value. I didn't do anything wrong. People, the Federal Reserve did, Fannie and Freddie did. Right. I know what it feels like for millions of Americans whose house lost their value because of reckless behavior by, by someone else in Wall Street and other places. So it makes me passionate to fight on behalf of people that are facing that because I did, because my neighbors right. did and still are. Sure. And, um, and you're right, when you criticize someone for that, you're criticizing millions of Americans who did nothing wrong but lost the value of their home. And I know you had trouble with that particular mortgage. You, I, you came close to declaring bankruptcy, but I think Donald Trump. No, I did not. That's oh, you did not. not. I, no, I read no, that in the New York Times. No, no. That's the were, problem with reading the New York Times. No, I've never, I, I, I've never come at me or close to being bankrupt. I, I think what he's talking about, though, is the, and this is something that uh, you have had to address in the past, is the use of the Republican Party credit card when you were down in Florida for yeah. personal, for personal. Well, and, and what it happens, like anybody else that has a card like that, that's allowed to use it for those purposes. Um, if there's a personal expense, I paid for it directly to American Express. You know, this issue was looked at by an, an audit by the Republican right. Party and cleared by the Florida Ethics Commission because some Democratic activists right. filed a complaint and cleared. This is an old attack. More than happy to address it again. But I'm going to focus on the future of America because the debt right. I'm worried about is the $19 trillion right. debt that our country has on its shoulders that we're going to leave to our children and grandchildren. Actually, a lot more than that when it adds up over the years. You know, uh, Senator, just one thing, if I could just uh, disrupt you and throw you off just a little bit by being at another location. Uh, but, Senator, uh, I know Ben Carson said, uh, when asked about Donald Trump hosting SNL, he said, I would never do it. Running for the presidency is a serious thing. How would, say, would Marco Rubio ever do a Hillary Clinton walk-on or a Donald Trump hosting? Because that's what's going to be happening just across the street from us uh, tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. They haven't offered, so we'll see if it fits in our schedule. I doubt I would be able to host, uh, primarily because, uh, you know, we have a lot of other things 
things to do and, and sure. uh, you know around the country but maybe I don't know I've never asked we'll see but but it running for president is a serious issue and obviously if you have a chance to in the process do something that's fine I don't think there's anything wrong with it what do you think about the uh, groups of uh, protesters that are going to be there from the Hispanic and Latino community any word on that well people have a right to protest I, I don't understand what they're protesting I mean if they don't like what he stands for vote against them don't watch yeah. the show did you see that video out there uh, with I think it was deport racism it's 2016 outrageous it's grotesque. where they got the little kid it's it's unfair the, to the children well first you know of all say? it's counterproductive I mean what, these who, who do these groups think they're impressing by doing this they're not bringing anybody to their side they're turning people off people look at that and say these people are grotesque I mean these are little children what kind of parent allows their children to go on a video like that and use that kind of profanity. I mean, what, about, what, what kind of parents allow a kid to do that? Well, what about this? I mean, as a Latino man, when you see children uh, really being now, I mean, they're characterized, they're mischaracterized. They're these are good kids. How do you it's, feel it's a disgusting as a Latino video. man seeing these kids being used for this propaganda? Well, as a father, it's a disgusting video. I, I, yeah. What kind of parent allows their children to participate in something like that? And by the way, they're creating this image that somehow, unless you're in favor of illegal immigration, you are anti-Hispanic. That's absurd. There are millions of Hispanics that are waiting to come to this country legally, whose family members have been waiting for 10 years and have done it the right way. They are upset that someone who came here illegally is going to be able to come faster and cheaper. So your message to the filmmakers who put together that video is? You're disgusting. I mean, this is a disgusting video, what you did with children, yeah. and to the parents of those children. You know, shame on them. I mean, what kind of parent allows their kids to go be exposed to the world in a YouTube right. video using those words? I kept saying as a mom, why wouldn't they want to show their kids at their best? These are good kids. It's they really, could have it's, shown them It's one of the most disgusting things I've seen in things. a long time. Senator, thank you for thank your time you. today. Thank you very much. Thanks. If Brian was here, he would shake your hand, but uh, he's down there.